Hello, I'm Yvonne Chevalier, and like you, I am wild about Washington. For many months, drought was a concern in Washington, but too much of a good thing brings its own problems. During the recent record rainfall, our habitat biologists have been working with landowners and other state agencies to limit flood damage to fish producing streams. When we look at a lot more water, uh, we get a lot more um, negative effects on fish in terms of um, scouring out of uh, reds and associated uh, uh, rearing and, and uh, overwintering areas for small fish. Uh, we have more um, sediment input off of uh, the road systems and erosion along bank lines and scouring effects associated with changes in the morphology of the river channel itself, uh, which are a natural process and uh, people don't always understand that. Uh, rivers move, they're always changing, and we need that change to some extent, but it's uh, exacerbated by a lot of the human activities that have affected the landscape. For this site specifically, we're looking at long-term function along the river's edge uh, associated with the riparian function. Uh, we need to look at the issues involving shade along the river, large woody debris input into the system, the best uh, water treatment we can you know, design in terms of protecting water quality and fish life in the river system. Those are the, the big issues I think that need to be tackled for this particular location. DOT has always been uh, pretty responsive to suggestions we have on how to minimize the effects of the road system on fish and or enhance um, conditions that in the longer term will benefit uh, fish resources and water quality. Specifically some of the things that we help provide are technical assistance with design for bank stabilization, um, pretty much educate the public on how streams function, what, why they need shade, why they need trees, why they need large woody debris, um, what function um, it provides to the overall health of a river system. In the larger picture of things, we're, we are gaining a lot of headway um, in terms of how receptive people, uh, both public and other agencies that we work with, how they're dealing with uh, natural resources in their daily task that they have for projects or repairs or anything that's going to affect the area that we live in. We've made a lot of inroads with other state agencies and federal agencies as well in how we can work collaboratively to build uh, a project or design land use that still provides adequate protection for the resource. Winter in Washington doesn't mean an end to fishing. Here are some good opportunities during the coming weeks. Wildlife biologists recently appeared before the Fish and Wildlife Commission to request that three species, 
found in our diminishing prairie habitat be listed as threatened. The request was granted and we now increase recovery effort for a gopher, a butterfly, and a bird. The streaked horn lark is a unique subspecies of the horn lark and it's found just in western Washington, western Oregon, and British Columbia. And so it's genetically distinct. It is unique in its appearance. It's brighter than any of the other subspecies uh, that we have for the horn lark. I can't think of another bird that's as rare as this one in Washington State. So I think what it does is it really highlights that it is that rare and it's that imperiled. Um, and if we don't do something uh, to reverse trends for it, then it will eventually disappear. In western Washington, pocket gophers are rare, and many people confuse moles and gophers. But pocket gophers occur in very few places. Their numbers are low, and their habitat is really dwindling quickly. We've listed the Mazama pocket gopher as a threatened species. Threatened really generally means that there's, there's some left, there's some time, there's something we can work with to try and secure or restore their numbers. It's a little bit less of a basket case that you get into when you're talking about an endangered species. So our hope with the Mazama pocket gopher is that we can actually secure places for them to live for the foreseeable future or perpetuity if possible, and maybe even increase their numbers and increase the number of places they occur so they're secure and no longer really in danger of extinction. Mazama pocket gophers, as I said earlier about rarity, there aren't many, and they aren't in very many places around western Washington, but where they do occur, they can be pretty abundant, pretty numerous. So they're, they're an important food. They're part of the prey base for things like hawks, owls, coyotes, weasels, and they serve an important function in just turning the soil. They're, they're great soil movers, and they sort of rotate that organic layer at the surface that comes from decaying vegetation down into the lower levels and rotate nutrients to the surface. So they really serve a function for both, you know, softening, aerating, and then just churning that soil. And it's an ecological function that few other species provide. The Talish Checker Spot is another Pacific Northwest endemic which means that in all the world, it only occurs in, in the Pacific Northwest, southern Vancouver Island, western Washington, and western Oregon. Um, it was known historically from over 70 sites, and now there are only a hand few remaining. So it's a, it's a special Pacific Northwest icon, and Washington plays a major role because we support most of the remaining populations and hopefully we can play an important role in recovery of this species as well. The western Washington grasslands are extremely rare habitat. They're also probably the most culturally significant habitat in Washington state. They were used historically by native people and they were selected initially for Euro-American settlement. Two to three percent of this habitat exists. Of all that used to exist, only two to three percent persist today. So it's very important that we protect and maintain these grassland habitats. We know that butterflies and moths function as pollinators, and we also know that their caterpillars are major ecological transformers. They eat a great amount of vegetation and convert it to biomass and fertilizer. We also know that all of the butterfly life stages, the adult, the eggs, the caterpillar, the chrysalis, are an important food source for many animals, from dragonflies to birds to mammals. But people don't love butterflies because of their ecological function. They love butterflies because they're beautiful and they're mysterious and their metamorphosis process is fascinating. Without the Taylor's checker spot, the Mazama pocket gopher, and the streak torn lark, Washington is a less unique place. This is the season for backyard bird feeders. It's a good way to introduce yourself to many species and see them up close. However, to be beneficial to the birds, a feeder requires regular care and cleaning. Well, one of the main reasons to clean a bird feeder is to protect the birds and keep the birds healthy. The two primary causes um, or concerns we have are that 
the seed in the feeder. If it's left in there too long, it'll get moldy, and that'll cause the birds to get sick. And uh, also just the bird droppings on the feeders. If you could get to your bird feeder and do this sort of cleaning once every couple of weeks, you're doing, um, that's probably good. So the first thing you really want to do is empty the seed, empty the seed mixture from your feeder, and then come up, have a tub that's large enough that you can dip the, uh, submerse the, the feeder into if possible. And that would be a soap solution. And then what we'll do after we take this into the, clean it off, we'll put it into another solution, which can be one part bleach to 10 parts water or uh, one part vinegar to 10 parts water. The difference being with the bleach solution, you don't have to let it soak as long. You can let it soak um, five or 10 minutes. So the first thing you do is submerge the feeder into the, into the container. And then also have a brush to help clean off all the, the seed, the older seeds. You can see what happens is the seed, um, especially here in the northwest when it rains quite a bit, it just gets caked on this outside. Typically in a hopper style feeder, the seeds in, inside stay dry and that's not really much of a problem. The other thing you want to think about is, um, is cleaning the seed around the feeder. So typically we'll, we'll see this later, probably um, after we clean it and fill it with seed. Birds will come in, land, they'll find the seeds that they want. In the meantime, they're pushing all the seeds to the ground. And so those seeds on the ground can also get moldy. So now I'm going to take the, uh, just rinse this off. Now when you're thinking about seeds, it's important to go to a local bird store or bird feeding store or a wild bird store or something like that and um, get local seeds so you're getting um, a mixture that birds locally will prefer because if, if, if you just get any sort of random uh, collection or, or assortment of seeds oftentimes the birds in this area will just be selective and you'll be wasting a lot of seed. So we'll pull this bleach solution up on the table, it's again one part bleach to about 10 parts water. So we're just going to just put the bleach solution in the hopper feeder. Once we've put this solution on there, I would just, I usually just let it set for a while and then uh, rinse it off. If you want more information, Department of Fish and Wildlife has a backyard wildlife sanctuary program. Go to the web page, get information, and uh, join up to be a backyard wildlife sanctuary steward. And you would um, then have all the information you need to get going on uh, having feeders and attracting birds to your backyard. If you want to travel beyond your own backyard, here's where you can see some of Washington's wildlife during the coming weeks. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching.